from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering Dell EMC World 2017. Brought to you by Dell EMC. Welcome back to Dell EMC World. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, Paul Gillen. We are joined by uh, Tim Bissio. He is the CTO of Lightstorm, James Cameron's film production company. Tim, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. I think it would be great if you could just set the scene for our viewers a little bit and just explain what you do at Lightstorm, how Lightstorm works. Sure, so uh, as I said, Lightstorm is uh, James Cameron's film production company. We're presently preparing uh, to go into production on the Avatar sequels. Um, uh, lights, uh, the Avatar film franchise is probably one of the most technically advanced and complicated uh, film productions sort of ever, ever made. So the prep time and the technology involved in, in producing these films is, uh, is incredible. So talk about what that means in terms of data. So in terms of data, um, we have seen in the last 10 years, uh, maybe 15 years in the film industry, a transformation from film to, from 100% film or 90% film to 100% data. At the same time, our, our, our requirements around uh, the actual film frame have gone up. So resolution's gone up. So think 2K 10 years ago, and now we're looking at up to 8K in resolutions. Uh, think about uh, 2D versus 3D. So you've got two streams of data instead of one stream of data. And then frame rate. So uh, Mr. Cameron's been pushing for higher and higher frame rates, uh, more photo, you know, more realistic film experience with higher frame rate. Uh, so we're looking at, you know, you're looking at going from 24 to 48 or 60 frames a second. So in terms of uh, in, in terms of amount of storage, feeds and speeds, uh, network bandwidth, everything has just blown up. So can, can you describe your current environment? What kind of servers, what kind of storage configuration you have? So we just went through a, a complete refresh of our data center uh, ahead of the sequels because we're, we're going into production like as we speak. Uh, and um, we are now riding on uh, Dell, um, Dell R730s for our uh, virtual infrastructure, uh, VMware with, uh, with vSAN, and um, brocade switches, and Isilon storage both for our production clusters and our nearline clusters. Talk about the challenges that, that you that you deal with in terms of the in what you're looking for. Oh, the, the challenges. <laughs> so every day is a new challenge. Um, you know, we we have to be um, uh, we have to be careful about budget. We have to be careful about spend. Um, we we as I said before, we've been preparing for about five years. Five years ago, our projections around data storage were different than our projections today. So we have to be nimble with cash flow and with, uh, with how we purchase. Isilon's a, a perfect example. Um, I, could, I, could, I could underestimate the amount of storage I needed five years ago, but because Isilon, I can grow Isilon in place, buying additional nodes helps me to solve that problem. How conscious do you have to be of, of storage capacity? Do you save basically everything, or do you have certain rules, principles that govern what you save? What Very conscious, so we save everything. Uh, nothing, is, nothing is lost. Uh, in fact, we have, um, all the content from the first from the first avatar is online um, on Isilon now. So um, if if our director asks us for a take from you know eight years ago, I have it. It's available to me, and, and my, you know, in fact, our, the artist can go and get it off Isilon directly. And what does that do to your budget? I, how, I mean, how do you, you you don't have an unlimited budget? How do you plan for something like that? Again, I think it's 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 um, it's planning, right? Uh, one of the things that sort of helps us is that the, the, the requirements for storage 10 years ago were much smaller. So it's actually a, a fairly small amount of our current storage budget, right? So our, our future needs are much bigger than our, our past needs. One of the, the sub-themes of this conference is really about how digital transformation is changing the workforce. Right. Can you talk a little bit about how it affects your team and the kinds of things you have to do as a leader? To, um, to manage the team with these challenges. You know, the, the interesting thing is our our, our business, our, our, the film industry sort of, uh, the, the technology line item is relatively new to, techno to, to filmmaking, right? Um, so we tend to run fairly lean. Um, if we run lean, we have to make that up somewhere else. So being able to virtualize our infrastructure, um, having a consistent storage platform, Isilon across the board, allows me to have a, you know, a smaller team to manage that that storage, um, you know, in terms of film and in terms of how technology has changed film production, not just in uh, resolution and frame rate, 
but we're working with a global partner in New Zealand. Um, so moving data to, to our partners in New Zealand seamlessly without days and days of wait time is, is critical. We're using VPlex as part of that solution to move data to them. Um, you know, communication is key. You know, uh, uh, video conferencing, voice, all of these things are essential to bring um, two companies together that are you know, 6,000 miles apart. How, how much of your time is spent just keeping up? I mean, how do you, how, with all of these, these innovations that are flowing out right now, how do you keep up with all this stuff? You know, uh, the, the, we just do. <laughs> <laughs> and, and quite a bit of my time is, uh, you know, again, every, every conference I come to, this, this year I'm looking at all sorts of new technology that I, I wish I had, you know, six months ago. Um, but, you know, as I said before, um, one of the reasons, going back to Isilon, for instance, um, uh, Isilon allows us to do rolling upgrades. So while we're in production, I, I don't have an opportunity to do a shutdown or to, to move to a different platform. I could buy, I could buy the new platform, put it in place, uh, migrate my data, and smart fail my old no doubt. So that's sort of one of the things we look at when we when we look at technology. So for the rest of us who are not in the movie business, can you talk a little bit about what the future holds for us as moviegoers and what kinds of innovations that we'll be seeing on the silver screen uh, a year from now, five years from now, that you will know, wow us? I, I, I could guess, um, but the reality is, and I've said this uh, once before, uh, technology and film have a certain romance, and you know, as You're technology not give it away. no, as technology goes forward, film goes forward, and it allows you know, technology allows us to do new things. Um, you know, Avatar wasn't possible. You know, I'm trying to remember. You know, 20 years ago, because we couldn't create that synthetic world for you and have you believe it. Um, as technology came online to make the film only then was it possible to make that film. So I think that you'll find that technology allows us to explore um, creative imagination deeper and deeper and deeper. What do you think is going to be the next leap in, in capability for filmmakers uh, inspired by technology? You know, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, you know. You're trying, just trying to keep up with today, aren't you? Yeah, um, yeah. Well, let me ask it a different, different way. Is there a technology that's on the horizon right now that you look at that really excites you? Um, Rather not discuss it. <laughs> is, is there a, a, a competitive, uh, do people in your business, in, in your position, compete with each other over the infrastructure that you have and over the, the effects that you can create? Say that again? Do, do, you, do people, do, do the movie companies compete with each other over the effects that they can create? Well, I, I wouldn't say compete. I think each film has its own vision. Um, and each film has to, you know, I, I don't think we're competing with another studio or another production. Um, most of the time, the, you know, with the original films, they are enough, you know, creative enough and different enough where they stand their own ground. You know, I think you've seen in the in the 80s maybe a lot of the blockbusters sort of were a lot a lot similar, and that doesn't get you anything. It just splits your market share. Um, being being able to, you know, Mr. Cameron's been, um, you know, all of his films are, are are hits. You know, I mean, he he's very creative. And th that's something you can't compete with. I mean, it just it just is. You have it or, or you don't. But you know, again, the technology is the piece that allows us to, to hopefully help them to realize that. And, and talk a little bit about that founder mindset because we're here at Dell AMC World. This is Michael Dell's brainchild. It started in his dorm room, mm -hmm. and now here we all are talking about the next wave of digital transformation. Yeah. How much is it James Cameron and his vision? I mean, how? I, I guess I'm wondering how much other people can play into it and have an impact. Look, I, I think it's, you know, um, again, I'm just a technologist, right? <laughs> um, I, I think it's 100% his vision. Um, and and to, 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 you know, I think each, each one of us play a part in helping to realize that as close as possible. You know, uh, um, you know uh, Jim and John, you know, expect 110% or 120% of us, uh, you know, period, because they expect more than that of themselves. So, uh, we all play a part in their world, but it's 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 Jim's world. The the uh, uh, IT world, particularly at the at the high end where you're working, is incredibly competitive. You're down in LA. You're competing with all of these other uh, all these other studios. How do you find the people, the skills that you need? You know that's a good that's a good point. Um, that that is one piece that's that's tough because we are competing for for skill sets. Um, you know, fortunately, uh, our our studios run as a family, and so we're able to pull people back from the last the last the last show. 
um, and then you know they handpick they handpick sort of you know uh, new folks and um, people that they know as well. So it works out. It's you know it is competitive, but as I said, we we go back to bringing family back home. Tim Bissio, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thanks for it. having me. I'm Rebecca Knight for Paul Gillen. We'll have more from D Dell EMC World after this.